Today, we are joined here on the Catholic Money Show podcast with a heck of a guest. You might know him from one of the over 20 books he's written, maybe his week daily uh, radio show on EWTN Radio and on Sirius XM, or maybe, I don't know, just from being Catholic with a pulse uh, in the last <laughs> couple of decades. We are so pleased to have on our show today, Dr. Greg Popcheck, uh, from Catholic Counselors. Uh, dot com and his brand new project, which we're going to get into a little bit inside this episode. But Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we are honored to have you here and we are itching to hear all about the new initiative that you have been working so hard to bring to uh, families mm -hmm. in the church. Yeah. First, though, before we dive into that, I would just love to hear, you know, maybe somebody is um, not familiar with your story. How did you get into ministry to begin with? And could you just share with us a little bit of a recap of your own faith journey? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I was uh, I was really raised, in, I mean, I was cradle Catholic, but, but more than that, um, my parents were involved in the charismatic renewal um, when I was little, and I started going to prayer meetings with them when I was four or five years old. And, uh, you know, my mom was uh, sad that, you know, I was one of the only kids there, um, mm -hmm. even though lots of families were coming. And uh, she went to our prayer group leader and said, you know, we should, we should have something for the kids. And he said, great, next week, put something together. And uh, so she started a children's ministry um, and from there adapted the uh, Life in the Spirit seminar for kids. Cool. And I was one of the first you know, groups to go through that. And it really, you know, it was, I was about six or seven years old. And it was before my first confession. And honestly, it, it really hit me hard and, and, and stuck. I had a very mm -hmm. real and personal encounter with the Holy Spirit at that time. And uh, it just really informed my encounter with the sacraments coming up um, that you know, I just I just had a very different experience in the sacraments than, than a lot of my friends did anyway. And, and uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, I've, I've always had a, a very personal relationship with the Lord. I've always had a very close relationship with the church. I, I thought for a long time that I was called to be a priest. I got to the seminary and about three weeks into it, I was I realized I was not called to be there. <laughs> um, no, just because you know it was it wasn't anything about the the, the priesthood or the seminary. It was I, I I knew I was called to ministry, mm -hmm. and at the time I really thought the only way to be a minister in the church was to be a priest. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I was there, it just suddenly dawned on me that there must be some other way. And uh, so you know, through I went I left uh, the seminary and Duquesne University, and I ended up at Franciscan University, and I uh, went to I did my you know undergraduate in psychology and theology, and. Uh, Met my wife there, Lisa, and we got married the day after graduation. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then so yeah, I mean just 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 through all of it, we, I started a you know I went to grad school, started a, a local regular secular private practice, and just prayed the whole time that Lord the because doing ministry was still in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know bit by bit we we had the my first our first book excuse me uh, Lisa my first book for better forever a Catholic guide to lifelong marriage came out in 1999. Um, and I started getting calls from people all over the world um, looking for Catholic counseling. And there really wasn't such a thing at the time. Mm. Um, so I thought, well, you know what, I'll do this. This will be my bit for the church. You know, I'll do, you know, two or three sessions a week. <laughs> um, and within six months, I had to close my face to face practice and was doing tele telephone counseling at the time, which was crazy. Nobody ever heard of that. Um, and then, uh, so it just really grew from there, um, to the point where we've done, Lisa and I've done over 20 books. We have uh, almost 20 therapists, full-time therapists on staff. We do over, over 1200 sessions a month with Catholic clients all over the world. Um, and then the radio programs and all the rest of it. So it's been, it's been a wild ride. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Look at what the Lord was able to, to take hold of. I mean, Nowadays, tele telecounseling is a thing, and especially because of the pandemic. Yeah. But man, a pioneer in the industry. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, as 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 little as two and a half years ago, people would look at me like I was crazy when I would tell them what we did. Right. And and you know now everybody and their uncle is doing telehealth. But it's it's <laughs> you know it's a very effective approach to for, for counseling, and we've been very pleased to be able to develop it over the years. Yeah, it's kind of like a 
21st century house call. Yeah, right. exactly. Which is great. Yeah, super convenient and helpful. Awesome. So with all of that, um, you've gained so much experience, you know, working with individuals and families over the years. Can you share a little bit about how Catholic Households on Mission um, kind of came to be and how you knew you wanted to have this be the next thing you launched? Yeah, well, so through CatholicCounselors.com, obviously, I and my you know colleagues work, do a lot of family, marriage and family work. Um, and, you know, so most of my career has been focusing on on helping struggling families. Um, and you know, we, re- we realize that there are very few resources to support families in just being healthy uh, and, and doing well. Um, and then the, and there, there are almost no Catholic uh, models. Uh, you know, family ministry in the church is really limited to either doing marriage preparation or supporting struggling couples. Uh, mm-hmm. And there's really yeah. nothing in between. Um, so um, just before the pandemic, um, I'm going to say 20, 2018, um, the Sunday Visitor Institute um, was was restructuring. And they they were looking at three different areas. One of those was Catholic parenting. Uh, and, uh, you know, have, after looking at the landscape, there, there weren't a whole lot of people doing work in that area. Um, and so they reached out to us, Lisa and I, and uh, we were consulting with them at that point about what's what was needed to develop um, resources for Catholic families. And the first thing that struck me is that you know we have um, as a, as Catholics uh, a very kind of well developed higher level theology of marriage and family life, but right. it doesn't trickle down at all to the pew. You know, if mm-hmm. you ask you know the average Catholic, you know what what makes Catholic families different nobody would be able to answer that. <laughs> you know, uh, we go to mass. That's maybe right. as far as it goes. Right. Um, which is, you know, good answer, but it's, it, there's more to it than that, you know? And, and so um, as a result of that, we uh, together with the OSV Institute, uh, Holy Cross Family Ministries and the McGrath Institute for, Dem- for Church Life at Notre Dame uh, put together the symposium on Catholic family life and spirituality, which was a gathering of over 50 theologians, social scientists, pastoral ministry folks, church leaders, uh, some of the folks in the USCCB were there, um, that we were looking at kind of four questions. You know, everybody from a multidisciplinary group was really addressing, bringing their research to address four questions. Number one, you know, how are Catholic families called to be different from our you know, non-Catholic and non-Christian counterparts? Number two, you know, given that most of what we think of as Catholic spirituality is actually drawn from the monastic and clerical traditions and tends not to really fit very neatly into family life, what would a family-based domestic church spirituality even look like in practice, right? Um, you know, because it actually doesn't occur to most people that that's true, but, but really, you know, most of what we think of as Catholic spirituality does is not meant for family life. It's just sort of retrofitted and mm-hmm. it doesn't fit all that terrifically well. So what would a family-based spirituality even look like? Um, thirdly, so many, uh, so many, so many sheep that should never have been lost in the first place, you know, uh, are, are lost and we spend so much time and energy chasing after those sheep. What could we do uh, to do a better job as Catholic families to raise the next generation of intentional disciples instead of right. just losing them to the culture? And mm-hmm. then finally, you know, how could we uh, help Catholic families really be what they are, the, the uh, outposts of grace in, 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 in a hurting world, bringing you know, Christ and, and, and doing service in the world so we can participate in the life and mission of the church. And so as a result of all that, um, we, we were able to articulate what we now call the Liturgy of Domestic Church Life. Um, and this Liturgy of Domestic Church Life, and that sounds really you know, highfalutin. And I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, a liturgy just means it's, it's a way of worshiping that God gave us. Right, so the liturgy of the Eucharist, for example, wasn't invented by people; it was instituted by Christ at the Last Supper, uh, with the intention of healing the damage that sin does to our relationship with God and each other. And that's what a liturgy is: it's it's instituted by God; it's a way of worshiping that, that heals the damage that sin does to our relationships. Well, at the beginning of time, God created families, and He built into families certain things that would help them be healthy and holy. Right, and 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 and. Throughout history and across every culture, research really shows that there are certain things that all families do when they're healthy and high-functioning families. Hmm. But when we unite those things to God's grace, we see that those also become a path to holiness. Hmm. Right? And so that's what makes it a liturgy. God created these habits that families can do to be healthy and holy. And when we do them, it's a way of worshiping God. 
and and becoming holy ourselves and healing the damage that sin does to our relationships really at the root of society. Mm-hmm. So this liturgy of domestic church life uh, evolved out of that. And over the last two years, we've been having conversations with bishops and church leaders and you know, theologians and all, all these other you know academics to just make sure that 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 what we were saying was just just something that we came up with. You know, that was it was really resonating with the, the teachings of the church. And we've gotten endorsements from really every level, uh, all the way up to the Vatican. Um, and uh, through that, the, we wanted to kind of make this accessible to people. So because, you know, you, you walk in and say the phrase, liturgy of domestic church life, and people are asleep before you finish your sentence. So, <laughs> so, Unless you're a liturgical nerd. That's right. So that's so that's where Catholic HOM comes from. It stands for Catholic. It's Catholic home without the E at the end. It's Catholic households on mission. Uh, and it's really uh, the kind of the public friendly accessible face of this liturgy of domestic church life that it exists to help families really experience Christ more meaningfully at home um, and experience their faith as a source of the warmth in their home. You know, cause when we get, when we get calls, uh, and I promise I'll shut up after this, but when we get calls to the radio program, for example, you know, uh, especially about, you know, Oh, my, my kid is falling away from the church or my kid does says he doesn't believe in God or we'll, we'll say things like, well, how do you practice your faith at your home? And they'll say, oh, well, we go to church every Sunday. Well, that's that's awesome. But but how do you practice your faith at home? Uh, well, our kids go to Catholic school. That's mm. fantastic. But how do you practice your faith at home? Well, um, our kids are in youth group. Awesome. But but how do you practice your faith at home? Like, <laughs> oh, um, we say grace. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that if, if we're lucky, that's how, that's where we go. Right. And again, it's because we haven't been given family friendly tools to really live our faith at home. And so we think that we think that we have to leave home to go find God, but mm-hmm. really the way the church's own teaching is about the way like, the, the ecclesiology is the theology of church, right? So it's, it's the way the church thinks about being church and, and our, our ecclesiology actually says that the parish exists to support the domestic church, the family, not the other mm-hmm. way around. But our lived experiences, it's completely insular, right? So the families exist to support the parish. That's not correct at all. Uh, and that makes us very internally focused and, and not a very evangelizing community. So it's the parishes exist to support domestic churches who are supposed to then bring grace out into the world. And this liturgy of domestic church life and, and CatholicHOM.com is all about forming families to be able to do that. You know, it gives families a structure that, that every family can use. Um, it doesn't matter what, you don't have to be a perfect family. You just have to be a family that wants to live a little bit more of God's perfect love. You know, you, you can you can be a step family, you can be a divorced family, a single parent family. It doesn't matter what kind of family you are. It doesn't matter where you live. We presented this model in over 30 countries on five continents through Holy Cross Family Ministries and every culture, every, every type of person says, this will work for us. Um, and mm. so it's not, you don't have to wear certain clothes. You don't have to do certain craft <laughs> projects. You don't have to say certain <laughs> prayers. It, it's just, it's a framework that allows you to be the family that God is calling you to be and do all the stuff you already do. Um, so it's not like adding more stuff to your day. It's doing the stuff all you already do, but doing it more intentionally and in a way that allows you to, to draw closer to Christ all day long. Hmm. So I have woo. like six questions. Yeah, I'm but- ready. <laughs> Like, you're ready. sorry you Shut asked up. me that one question. We have about three minutes for the next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like the phrase you used, uh, the, the, the family, that the, the domestic church is to be an, an outpost of grace in the world. What other than, of course, going to Catholic home, Catholic HOM, um, and eating up everything that's there, what's like a first step that folks listening or watching right now could take to go in that direction. Yeah. And well, I mean, it's exactly that, that idea that I was just saying that, that, you know, um, we don't have to leave home to find God. Um, you know, God, God wants to be part of your family. You know, there, there's that, uh, scripture in revelations that says, Jesus stands, I stand at the door and knock. Right. And, and he's standing into, at the door of our home and he's knocking and he wants to be part of our families, but we forget to invite him into the things we, mm-hmm. we, mm-hmm. you know, we, we think that he might want to pop by for the first five minutes of dinner and then he's go, he's busy. He has to do that sort of thing. <laughs> um, you know, but, but he wants to be part of, 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 uh, you know, the way we play games and he wants to be part mm-hmm. of our discipline and he wants to be part of the, our, our conversations and he wants to be part of all of our family rituals and celebrations. He just sort of standing there waiting for us to invite him in. You know, and and so, you know, uh, CatholicHOM.com gives people the means to do that. You know, just little simple ways to do the stuff you already do all day 
but invite God to be part of it and, and, and let it be a way that he reveals his love for you and for your kids. Um, and so, you know, a big, big part of, so the, the, the liturgy of domestic church life is broken up into three rites, just like any other liturgy is made up of rites, uh, R-I-T-E-S. Um, it just means parts basically. Uh, and, um, the first right in the liturgy of domestic church life is the, the right of Christian relationship. So this is, these are four practices that kind of teach people how to, how, how Christians relate to each other differently from everybody else. But the main theme is that the Christians try to put a little bit of Christ's sacrificial love into everything that they do so that we can, so we're not just loving each other with our love. We're remembering that we're trying to show each other how special in love we are to God too. Um, and, and so that's the priestly mission of baptism because a priest offers sacrifice. And so, uh, in that offering of that sacrificial love, we, we consecrate our daily lives to Christ. And so when we, when we say, okay, God, you know, I got to go discipline my kid, um, I, show me how to do that in a way that actually helps them be who you want them to be and helps me communicate their love for them, uh, your love for them, that I'm, I'm in my priestly role, consecrating that moment to God and letting God's grace and love flow through me and my home so that working with God, you know, we can all be a closer, more loving and graceful family. I mean, it's little things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, but so, so the, you know, I can go through the other rights, but the, the answer, stick to your question. Um, the, the, the big takeaway is, you know, you don't have to leave home to go find God. In fact, you don't even have to leave home to go serve the church. Um, and, and we talk about that in the right of reaching out. There are lots of different ways that you can, do service within your home and, and starting with each other. You know, um, it doesn't mean doing 20 different service projects and letting family, parish and community service be just one more thing that divides your family. Um, yeah. You know, so it's all these little ways to, to strengthen your relationships um, and, and, and support each other in being a more loving, connected and caring household. Hmm. You know, when you said that just that, that simple first step that, you know, he wants to be part of every aspect of your family life. You know, I think I've met people before where they've said they would maybe want that, but they they fear that, you know, Jesus is the ultimate wet towel. He's he's like a damper. You know, you bring him in and you're going to lose all the fun. But we found in our experience that it's the opposite. If you bring him into the game night and you bring him into the family meal or the vacation or the movie night, it's not like you're just going to be talking about Jesus for the next 90 minutes, but He's with you, and now it enhances these experiences and makes them even better. Mm -hmm. Well, that's um, right, and and yeah, and, and you know, and and when inviting Jesus into everything we do doesn't necessarily mean it has to be overtly religious, right? We don't have right. to we don't have to carry a crucifix behind us everywhere we go in our home, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it's not, it's not you know, I, I, you know, we yeah, I'm being intentionally provocative because I'm just trying to show how silly that idea really, is. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, I mean, you, you could, I mean, you, you could, for example, at the beginning of a game night, you know, say, you know, Lord, please just let us have fun and get along well and really just enjoy each other. And then at the end of it, say, you know, thank you for letting us having such a great to have such a great time and getting along so well with it. Or you might not even do that. But, the, you know, one of the things is that we, we like to say is that, you know, so so I work for, um, in addition to CatholicCounselors.com, my wife and I developed in partnership with Holy Cross Family Ministries, the Peyton Institute for Domestic Church Life. It's named for Father, Venerable Father Patrick Payton, who's famous for the phrase, the family that prays together stays together. But we like to say the family that plays together prays together. Um, and, and, and in truth, you know, because in the rite of family rituals, which is the second rite, we're, live, we're teaching families how to live out their prophetic mission of baptism. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, people think, well, prophet, you know, they tell the future. That's, you know, they're all kind of, you know, weird, psychic spiritual powers. It's not what a prophet is at all. <laughs> well, the catechism says that the, the, what a prophet does is through words and actions, call others to lead godly lives. Right? And so when families create strong rituals for working, playing, talking, and praying together every day, what they're doing is they're modeling Christian attitudes toward work and fun and relationships and faith. Everything that human beings do. You know, when we make the time to just even five minutes per thing, like work, play, talk, pray every day, we're taking the time to model how Christians relate to that stuff. And that's mm -hmm. prophetic, you know? And so even if you don't make those things overtly religious and, you know, the, the Jesus is the wet blanket, as you were saying, you know, the fact that we as a Christian family who is really trying our best to love each other with Christ's love are working and playing and talking and praying together every day, you know, that's, that's a powerful witness to how mm -hmm. Christians live. It's the heart, strong family rituals are the heart of family discipleship. And, and and honestly, it's it's the it's 
research really shows that strong family rituals are the best way to increase the likelihood that your kids will own their faith as adults. Mm-hmm. That's where I was going to go next in my question. So Holy Spirit really teed you up there. Um, but you had mentioned before, you know, that you're kind of um, marrying kind of some of the natural things with God's grace um, and kind of some of those maybe best practices for healthy families with um, our call as Catholic families. Could you give some examples of how this could look in an everyday family's life um, mm-hmm. if they really start implementing some new rituals or habits? Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, um, well, let, let's, so, so let, let me just, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give an example maybe from each of the three rites, right? So, okay. so we've talked about the first two already. I'll just kind of briefly touch on the third right, and then we'll kind of circle back if that's okay. So, so the third right is the right of Christian, oh, excuse me, a right of reaching out. Okay, and that's the that's the royal mission of baptism, uh, where we we reign with Christ by serving with Him. Okay, when we when we and when Christians think about service, though, we tend to think about service projects, right? Uh, I'm going to go I'm going to go outside my home and go go serve those people over there who are going to give me special credit for the service that I'm giving them. But I'm going to ignore my going to ignore my wife and kids, right? Because they're just you know, they're here; they don't count. Anything I do for them is selfish, right? I got to go take care of those people in order for it to count. And, and Jesus is a big scoreboard. Um, but the right of Christian, right of reaching out, you know, it, it, it focuses on how we can create a household where service is part of what we do, uh, part of who we are rather than just what we do. You know, so it starts with families looking for little ways to serve each other. So one of the things that we suggest is that families ask, what's one small thing we could all do to make each other's day a little easier and more pleasant today? You know, that's, that's one, I mean, we, that's, that's, that's not, that's one thing that we do now, you know, we, 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 the, the, the practice under that, right. Is, is families serving each other and how you do that in your family up to you. But, but in our family, one of the simple things that we do is we, we will ask in the morning, you know, when we have a family, little family prayer, maybe last all of three minutes, you know, and then we'll say, you know, Hey, you know, what's, what do you guys need? You know, is there anything that we can do to help each other, you know, uh, have an easier, more pleasant day? And we'll just talk about it. And then we actually try to do those things. You know, that's, that's that, that idea of taking just even two minutes to think about how could we try to help each other out today mm-hmm. is a beautiful thing, you know, and it may, it changes the dynamic in the home. Um, anyway, so let's, so that's, that's one example. Let's, let's go back to the right of Christian relationship. Um, the, the first practice in the right of Christian relationship is scheduling family time first. You know, because it's it's a little bit like, you know, prioritizing mass, right? Mass doesn't just happen because we want it to. We have to make a point of getting there, you know, uh, and, and carve out the time for it. And sometimes it's hard to do that. Um, well, the same thing's true. We have to carve out time to be a domestic church. You know, we have to carve out time to actually be that, that that's create that space for communion to happen. You know, if, if our family life is just what we fit in around all the other 20,000 activities we're doing on a Wednesday night, and we get right. literally three minutes with our kids uh, a day. We can't disciple them into anything. You know, we're giving them our, we're giving all of our power away. Yes. You know, we, we can't live a family life like that and then wonder why our kids fell away as adults because we weren't, a, we weren't an influence in their lives. Right? We gave it all up. So, so scheduling family time first and, and then fitting other activities around that. And it doesn't mean that you can never leave your house, right? It just means you have to be intentional about the things that you do and, and, and you carve out the time for the family meals and the family game night and the family day first, and you fit other stuff around that. And, and you can be flexible. I mean, you know, you can move things around as you have to, and that's all fine. It doesn't have to be rigid and, you know, you know, whatever locked in, but it just has to happen, right? Where you're mm-hmm. scheduling that time first and being intentional about it. So that would be one example. There are, there are three other practices. Another one is uh, in the great of Christian relationship is extravagant affection and affirmation. Our our bodies were actually created to thrive with, with affection. Um, there's actually a ton of research that really shows on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level, the more affection, healthy affection we get, the healthier we are on every level. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, God is 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 his he's his love is super abundant, right? You know, I mean, J- Jesus became one of us, so that he emptied himself and became man, so that he, we could experience his love for us through our senses. Right. And then even after he ascended into heaven, he, he gave us the sacraments so we could continue to experience his love through our senses. And, and, God, and through the sacraments, God's, lo- God's arms are always open to his children. And in the same way, you know, we should be that, that demonstrative and affectionate in our, in our relationships, too, because the catechism tells us that, that parents are God's face to their children. 
you know, and, and, and I want my children to know the, how welcome they are in God's arms. And they're mm-hmm. only going to know that if they're welcome in mine. You know, so that would be another example. I hope you hug your yeah. kids already, right? Uh, but yeah. but the liturgy of domestic church life helps you hug your kids and see that that's a prayer. You know, and 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 that's this is a way of I'm communicating God, not just my love but God's love, and and I'm giving. You can even consecrate that moment to God, Lord. Let me be. You know, let me show them how much you love them when I'm holding them in my arms. You know, this mm-hmm. just those little things, right? That yeah. you're already doing, just doing it more intentionally and to a greater purpose. Then the rite of family rituals. That's you know. Again, working, playing, talking, and praying every day, and people are like, oh my gosh, you know, how am I going to add any of those any of those things to the schedule? How am I going to fit all that? Well, I'm pretty sure you probably wash dishes, you know, once in a while, right? Um, you know, <laughs> but doing it together, you know what? Turn on some music, you know, everybody clear the plate, you know, instead of it. Okay, it's your turn to do dishes, and you go clean the toilet, and I, you do your homework, and then we're all fed <laughs> about it. And eventually, when it's all done, we'll see each other three seconds before we fall asleep, like. <laughs> You know, make a family ritual where you actually work together. You know, you, instead of instead of trying to save all your relationships for when all the work is done, do some of that stuff together and use it to connect. You know, put on some music, continue the conversation you started over dinner, laugh, splash each other with the water a little bit. You know, have they flick each other with the towel, whatever. You know, just have some fun. That's a and, bad idea. And just you know, and the whole you know, and again, you know, the, the point the point of that is that that again, the the the, the secular attitude toward jobs toward work is get it done. Just get it done. I'm a machine. I got to get it done. I'm a machine. The Christian attitude toward relationship, uh, toward toward work is it's about connecting and showing up for each other and 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 being there and knowing we can count on each other. And and so now that you know that's again it's a simple example of, of how family rituals for working, playing, talking, praying convey Christian attitudes toward work and fun and relationships and faith. Um, so that would be one example, you know. But but all the you know if you're looking for how do I create family rituals. Whatever you all do individually, pick one of those things and do it together. And it's, you're already doing it. Just do it together. You know? mm-hmm. And then we talked a little bit about the right of reaching out already, where you know, we're, we're asking each day, you know, what's one small thing we can do to, to try to make each other's day a little more pl- easier or more pleasant. Another example, um, you know, the, the ministry of kindness. All right, so this, is, uh, this will be the third practice in that right of reaching out, the families, being godly families in the world. So this is not necessarily doing service projects, but when you go out as a family, you know, don't be the family that runs over the old person as you walk into the grocery store. You know, be the, be the family that holds the door for them. You know, be the family that when you stop, you know, either for fast food or out goes out to dinner, you you know, you use the server's name and you say thank you and please and you smile at them and you're kind, you know, and you leave a good tip. And you know, I can't tell you the number of times. I mean, this is really shocking to me, frankly. In the last year, I can probably count on. My, you know, one hand, the number of times a waitress has cried because we've been nice to her, like mm. you who will say, thank you guys for, I can't tell you how mean people have been to me. It's just so nice to see a family that that's actually kind, you know, I mean, mm. and, and how beautiful that is though, to, to, to be able to convey God's love just, just by that simple little thing, you know, that's a powerful ministry. You know, what makes that family different? Oh, and, and you happen to see them also maybe say grace before that meal. That says something, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then, and then, you know, another example of the right of reaching out is serving together, right? So asking the parish scheduler to put you all on for the same mass, you know, and so what that the, you know, that the 11 o'clock mass is sponsored by the pop check family, you know, that's okay. You know, um, <laughs> you know or, or, or that you're doing community service together in some way. But it, what's cool about that is not just that you're, you're doing service and that people are being blessed by that particular service, but they're being blessed by the witness of your family, you know, loving each other and serving together. And that's a really powerful thing. You know, so we all have a tendency to discount those little things that families mm-hmm. do. But when we, when, we, when we use this framework of the liturgy of domestic church life to do them more intentionally and to do them as a way of experiencing God's love and sharing God's love, it just raises it to a whole other level without putting a whole lot of effort out, you know? I love it. Man, I'm excited. We're going to be such a great family after this. <laughs> 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 so I'd like to think we had a couple things. Yeah, there. no, we were, we were okay. We're ready. This well, is we like to say, you know, it helps you be an even more loving. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Even <laughs> better. You know, again, uh, you know, you're probably doing a lot of these things that implicitly. Like that's one of the things that we like to try to emphasize. It's, you know, yes, Catholic Home, Catholic H O M dot com is a program that supports families in living out the liturgy of domestic church life. But the liturgy of domestic church life is not a program. 
you know, we really believe it as a liturgy, right? That was instituted by God and given to the whole world. And, and so chances are, if there's anything good about your family, you're already doing a lot of the stuff that's part of this liturgy of domestic church life implicitly without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. um, this, this framework just helps you focus a little more so you can do it more intentionally and to greater purpose. Yeah. Right. So I love, man, all of those examples though, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Got to do that. Let's start doing that more. It's fantastic. Um, this is the Catholic Money Show. How can finances play a role in a family being on mission? Oh, well, I mean, lots you of different ways. So you got to get at least something money related. Well, that's, okay. in. No, that's great. Well, so, so first of all, I mean, let's say in the right of family rituals, right? Uh, creating a talk ritual to discuss your budget. Mm -hmm. um, to discuss charitable giving, you know, to talk about the values that you have around money. I mean, you know, money is such a, I'm not even preaching the choir here, but money is such a fraught topic, you know, people don't like to talk about it. Um, and they're scared to talk about it, you know, and, and so then they make stupid decisions because they have different, uh, you know, spending styles, different saving styles, different values about money. Um, and, but if you create a talk ritual for for meeting together to talk about how you're spending and what you you know and uh, know how you need to budget and all of that, you know that's really helping to smooth something out that a lot of couples mm -hmm. really struggle with. Um, yeah. You know, another example, you know, um, in the right of reaching out, the 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 second practice in the right of reaching out is is um, uh, sorry, so uh, serving serving others from home, right? So 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 uh, example being discussing charitable giving, right? Budgeting for charitable giving or, you know, uh, going through the house as a family and picking up gently used toys or clothes and together and collecting them and then bringing them to the urban mission together or whatever, you know, but, but I mean, another uh, tied in with all of that is having those conversations about charitable giving and really looking at how are we spending? You know, are we making sure that we're spending with others in mind? You know, are we looking, are we really looking to be good stewards of the money that we've been giving? Uh, you know, and, and that, that those are those are all part of that right of reaching out, um, you know. So it's it's a, it's a big part of it. Lovely. Love it. Yeah. So um, people are listening to this. I'm sure they're just as excited as we are to see uh, see this and watch. You know how you're going to roll this out. Um, how can people join Catholic households on mission, and what can they expect when they get into the community? Sure, great. So, so there, it's a, uh, it starts out as a free app. Uh, it's uh, so it's free to download. If you go to catholichom.com, you can learn more about it there, and then it's also available at the uh, Apple Store and Google Play as well. Uh, and so, it, with the free membership, um, you get um, access to there's a, there's a community forum there that we call Everyone's Home, um, and uh, there there we have uh, downloadable resources on every part of the liturgy of domestic church life. We've got coloring pages. We've got uh, prayer, print out prayer cards for your family. We've got other activities. We've got a, uh, a, a domestic church blueprint activity, which has you kind of go mm. through a, a, a quiz sort of that kind of has you look at all the different parts of the liturgy of domestic church life and rate yourself for what you do well already and what you might want to work on and offer suggestions for how to improve on that. Um, we uh, have some videos there uh, of interviews and talks that we've done on the liturgy of domestic church life. Basically on the free side, it's all the information you need to just learn the liturgy of domestic church life and, and start running with it yourself. Um, and then and with, with, with some opportunity to interact with other members in the, uh, in the forum. Uh, on the premium side, uh, we offer all the support that families might need to go deeper uh, and to really encourage each other with that. So there, there's a, there, we uh, um, actually created a, 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 an animated series um, where, where Lisa and I are taking an animated cartoon family uh, through the, uh, the whole, um, the, the whole liturgy of domestic church life. Uh, and we worked, uh, actually we worked on that with family theater productions in Hollywood um, to do these six uh, very short family friendly animated videos that teach all the different dimensions of this, this, how, this model. Uh, and, and then there are kind of, there are discussion questions and little activity sheets that go along with each, each episode that families can do. Uh, we have also done over 30 now and it's growing library of, of building your Catholic home DIY videos. Um, so it's just, it's a kind of a deeper dive into each of the practices. I want to create family rituals, but I don't know where to start. You know, I, I, I like this idea of gentle discipline, but, but where do I start? You know, wh whatever it is, but you know, so all the different things, you know, how do you go a little bit deeper? We've got at least two or three videos on each of the points and we're going to be developing that library based on, uh, you know, premium members questions that they might have. Awesome. Uh, we will have regular live stream events at least once a month. 
we also have a family a monthly family meeting, which is a, a live uh, stream Q and A for parenting questions and questions about the liturgy of domestic church life that Lisa and I will be uh, participating in. Um, we'll have uh, opportunities for for uh, coaching as well there, and so I mean, just the whole idea is to just flood people with the but whatever resources you want, right? You can you can use what you want, you don't use what you don't want, but it's all there, you know, to to just give you whatever support you need uh, wherever you're at. To, to do more to live out this liturgy of domestic church life. And, and the premium uh, side is, is $14.95 a month. Cool. For, for, That's uh, awesome. So people can go to um, Catholic Home without an E. H-O-M. Or they can go to the App Store. Yep, App Store, Google Play, download it. There you go. You see the oh, characters, right, the animated home. characters right there. I'm already there in. Go. I'm already in. There it is, everybody. Um, and I'm just, I'm excited to dive in because, um, you know, in our own family's journey, uh, in the early years, you know, we we were blessed um, to adopt three times in four years, so we were kind of drowning for a second there, um, and things were happening to us. And then we began to realize we needed something, but we mm-hmm. we received a ton of formation personally, but not on how to run a family. Yeah. Um, and so this is such a need in the church, and so I just greatly appreciate putting together something so that you know young families can kind of learn the ropes of how to do this chaotically but beautiful thing called mm. family life. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for yeah. doing that. Oh, you're welcome. Can I, you know what, if, could you just hold it up just one more second? I just wanted to yeah. show you something. I'm sorry. No worries. So if you, if you see on the, on the app, if you hold that up, okay. And, and the, you see the, there's a pelican there. Uh, uh-huh. that, that, yeah. So that's, that's mom Maria. And then Marty is the kid. And there's a pelican there. Um, you can take it down. The, the pelican why do they have a pet pelican? And it doesn't actually do much of that. He just kind of flies through and causes some, you know, chaos and whatever. But, but the family <laughs> has a pelican, pet pelican because the pelican is actually a medieval symbol of the Eucharist um, because the pelican kind of buries its beak in its, its, its wing and then it feeds its young and it, they, and it has a red tip on the beak. So people used mm. to think that it would feed its young its own flesh and blood. So it became a symbol of the Eucharist. And so the family, the home family has a pet pelican to symbolize the presence of Eucharistic grace just in the background of their home all the time. Cool. Uh, and, and so, you know, I just wanted to kind of leave with that, 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 that the whole point of the Catholic Home program is to enable you to bring that Eucharistic grace home and experience mm-hmm. Christ all week long, even in the middle of all the crazy and the chaos and the funny moments and the sad moments and everything that's in between. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I could get one, one more question. A so, bonus question. Yes. A bonus here. Okay. If, so think you had all this, I mean, how, how long have you been married? 33 years. Okay. So 33 years of marriage experience. Oh, that's over three times as much as us. Um, you've had all this experience, you know, counseling people, learning, understanding so much about family life and relationships. If you had like a magic telephone that you could pick up, and talk to yourself, right? That day after graduation, when you got married, what would you what would you tell yourself and or to you and Lisa? Question, what would you tell is reserved those for our Waltman Academy then, members? But uh, the good news really is you can start a free trial of Waltman Academy right now. Go to walletwin.com slash start my trial. All one word, start my trial. That's walletwin.com slash start my trial to hear the answer to that question. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this chat. Um, we oh, truly can't wait to share what you are doing with Catholic Households on Mission. Yeah. Um, we'll be praying for this initiative and can't wait to share it with other families that we know it'll bless. Mm-hmm. Thank you. you we appreciate that. And I really hope it'll be a blessing for lots of folks and I hope that they will go to catholichom.com and check it out. It's absolutely free. No commitment at all. Uh, but we hope you will make a commitment if you're there. But either way, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Very good. Will everything be in the show notes? Yep, links, everything in the show notes, uh, and everything, yeah, everything you'll need. So you can either type it in catholichom.com or just click the link that you'll see in your show notes. All right, thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, bye for now.